Broadcasting from the KMF Collective Studio, it's time for the Athletes of the Titan Games podcast. This limited release show features the stories of the 2020 contestants of Dwayne The Rock Johnson's athletic competition, NBC's The Titan Games. Now, here's your host, Katie Galley. everyone and welcome to season two episode 25 of the athletes of the titan games podcast i'm your host katie galley in the kmf collective studio with me today i have titan games athlete and c-130j instructor pilot in the u.s air force noah palisha how are you doing noah i'm doing great Awesome. Well, no, thank you so much for um, taking time to speak with me. It's really cool right now. It's nighttime where I'm at, but it's morning time where you're at. <laughs> it's the uh, the really cool power of like interview and uh, podcasting that we get to kind of transcend time zones. It has been an adventure for sure. Uh, <laughs> from the moment I found out I was going to be on the show to all these interviews, it's been a battle of time zones for sure. I bet. I mean, having to, to book all of these um, media appearances. Um, well, Noah, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me. I'm super excited to dive in. So just to learn a little bit um, more about your background, Noah, where did you grow up and how, if at all, was your childhood shaped by athletics? Sure. I was born in Alaska and uh, shortly after maybe five years, I moved to uh, Pennsylvania where I, I did the majority of my, my growing up. So my brother is 10 years older than I am, and uh, my sister was seven years older. And so I was essentially an only child uh, growing up in a small town in, in Pennsylvania. And all I knew was that uh, my brother and sister were super athletic, and uh, all I could do was just try to live up to them in any way I could. I never really had the uh, exceptional brain power that they did, so <laughs> the only way I could ever compete on the same level as them was in So I really just took my, took my time and focused all my attention on, uh, on running and uh, doing what was best. So that eventually got me into school. And uh, yeah, it's it's really shaped who I am because of the interactions I've had with other athletes who are just so motivated and determined, as well as the coaches that I've had who are who have helped shape me personally who I am today. Absolutely. I love that. Um, being shaped by such important figures in your life, but then too, um, having running be such a pillar um, in your young age. And then of course, growing and going into college. And so Noah, um, was your sport then, was it track and field? Was it co- cross country? What kind of events or sports did you really take to um, with running at the helm? So you'll see in the show, I talk a lot about being a kind of a, a mixed athlete. So all the way through childhood, I competed in everything. You know, I played football, you know, I was uh, a quarterback, albeit a small one, and uh, ran cross country, track and field, and baseball, and everything I possibly could all the way through high school. And then uh, it was finally time to make a decision as to what I was going to be, what I was going to be most successful at in college. So at the Air Force Academy, I ran track and field. Um, I didn't know exactly what I was going to do. I initially was recruited as a long distance runner uh, on the cross country team and, and distance events. But then uh, within the first week or so, my coach pulled me aside and said, hey, I know you pole vaulted and did javelin in high school, so we're going to try this uh, decathlon thing for you. And so after the first indoor track meet with the indoor men's heptathlon, I broke the freshman record, and uh, the rest is history. I just kept doing that for the next four years. So I uh, became a jack-of-all-trades in track and field, master of none, <laughs> but uh, ended up doing pretty well, making it to the NCAA track and field championships my senior year in 2011. And uh, it's kind of shaped who I am from here on out as an athlete, where I really didn't want to focus in one area. I've always wanted to do everything. So yeah, running's always been a baseline for my brother and I, but we've always been willing to do anything. So if it's a flag football or um, a basketball intramurals, or while we go out on a run, we'll just stop and do a couple hundred push-ups and squats, or we'll be the first ones in the gym to go bench press and squat. Um, I mean, I, I may not look like much as a 170 pound guy on uh, Titan games compared to these 200 and 20, 230 pound behemoths, but uh, <laughs> a five minute mile, and I can also deadlift 420 pounds. So it just kind of goes to show the balance of how we've uh, used athletics and and our um, our diversity in athletics to to grow up and shape who we are today. 
Absolutely. I mean, it's you're right. It's so important because you can you're such a well-rounded athlete. And of course, it's your upbringing, like you said, being influenced by your brother. But to um, I think track and field and specifically being a decathlete, heptathlete, that really lends to it because you have to be at least somewhat skilled at all of those different events in order to minimally excel. And the idea that you would be able to go on to the NCAA championships in those events. I mean, it's just that takes a lot of effort and skill and you have to be able to train yourself in that way. And of course, you had no idea but you were actually also training for your eventual appearance on the Titan Games. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, not only physical, um, that's the easy part to talk about, but I'll tell you what, uh, every week having to go train with the throwers or the distance guys or the sprinters uh, or the jumpers, everybody has their own different personality. So I was fortunate enough, not only, yeah, athletics had a lot to do with it, but I was fortunate enough to, to go interact with all sorts of different types of, of individuals. And uh, I, I feel like that really shaped my my mental capacity, uh, not only in my work life, but also um, prepared me for the Titan game. So I, I was able to go out there and compete against some, you know, thrower type individuals some very, very strong athletes. But instead of compete head to head against them, strength versus strength, I was able to use my my benefit uh, or my my strengths of endurance and uh, and quickness and speed and agility to uh, to outmatch Right. Uh, who they were. Yeah. It's, it was a, definitely a helpful transition and uh, a way I could uh, use my previous experience to be productive on the show. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And um, you're right. It's so much more than just the physical aspect. It's the mental aspect, too. And you come up against somebody who is that much bigger than you or appears that much stronger than you. And you become it would be so easy to become mentally defeated before the competition even begins and just to count yourself out. But um, doing all of those different events, you learned that you could really hang. And like you said, it was just being driven. Um, You were willing to do anything, you both you and your brother. And so you just went up against it um, and did whatever whatever it was going to take. Absolutely, and uh, much like much like golf, the decathlon and golf are very similar in that uh, if you have a bad event or if you have a bad uh, hit or a bad hole, you just got to shake it off and move along. So, you know, there were there were a couple events where I had on the Titan Games where I had a, a plan and then I had a backup plan. So if I stumbled or I couldn't get to how I wanted to attack my first plan, then I had a backup plan. And so uh, I just kind of had to shake it off and and then move on and go with plan plan B and and hope it worked. That's about it. (laughs) Yeah, that's, I mean, and that's an amazing mentality to have, but I think too, it's, it really must be so challenging to have, um, to develop that. And I think you hit on it. Of course you develop that as an athlete and I'm sure drawing on your experience, um, in the air force too, that must have helped shape that mentality, but it's, it is a difficult one to to develop. And so Noah then, of course, going to school and being this athletically inclined, um, but then too, um, in pursuit of joining the Air Force, um, where did that desire or passion come from and what made you choose that path? Oh, man, that was that was so easy. Uh, I've got a long lineage of military service in my, in my family tree, but uh, more closely related is uh, my mom served. She was a, a lab tech in the Air Force. My dad was uh, an Air Force pilot for 23 years, C-130s. I actually followed his footsteps. And then obviously my brother more recently went to West Point about 10 years before uh, I I was able to go to school. And so uh, walking through my hallways of my house, I would look up on the wall and see a picture of my dad in pilot training standing next to a T-38. You know, uh, I mean, essentially just looking like a fighter pilot, super cool. And so, you know, I've always wanted to do that. And then uh, as I grew up, Eric went to West Point. And uh, he was like, hey, man, if you have the eyes, uh, don't go to West Point. <laughs> go, to the Air- <laughs> go become a pilot. So, um, you know, it, it started out as a, you know, I want to be this cool pilot. But then as I, as I left high school and into the academy, I realized that it, it is an incredible opportunity to not only just fly aircraft for the Air Force, but it's incredibly humbling to know how much the, the U.S. military and the U.S. Air Force helps the rest of the world and the humanitarian disaster relief, um, air medical evacuation. It's insane that, um, that we're so helpful throughout the world. And it's, it's, it's really shaped me who, I, who I am. Um, you know, initially I wanted to go become this cool pilot, but now I've realized that there's so much more to why I want to be a pilot every day than, uh, what I initially thought when I was in high school. <laughs> And that's, I mean, that really is incredible. The expanse of people that you get to touch, the things that you get to do. Um, and like you said, I mean, that legacy, it was something far beyond what you even dreamed or thought it was. Um, and now it just, it uh, 
kind of per- supersedes that. And so Noah um, is, is specifically as a C-130J instructor pilot in the Air Force. Um, what do you do? Oh, we are responsible for quick reaction to any sort of contingencies that involve uh, airdrop operations or uh, challenging air land operations, whether it be in uh, an actual airfield or as we've seen down in uh, humanitarian assistance uh, and disaster relief down in the Pacific. And we cover right now, as in Yokota Air Base, the C-130s here cover the uh, largest AOR in the world. And I'll tell you what, uh, the Pacific is is um, is a tough area for uh, natural disasters. And so we are all around the Pacific helping out with uh, flying into dirt airfields or uh, broken down airfields that most people can't get into. And we bring in cargo and support and water and supplies uh, to all over. So whether it be an actual contingency um, around the Pacific and we're doing uh, airdrop operations, or if it's uh, going into remote island airfields that have no pavement on them, uh, we're there to support. Wow. I mean, um, the like that's that's pretty incredible the expanse of that and what you what you get to do and so clearly no you must live a incredibly busy and busy life I mean being um traveling and being abroad and and then too just the nature of the job that you have and so I wonder how did this opportunity um to become a contestant on this season of the Titan Games come about for you and why did you decide uh that it was something you wanted to pursue uh, you hit the nail on the head that's actually that's totally right it's it's difficult. I'm gone uh, out of 365 days, uh, about 270 on the road. So it's difficult and challenging to, to keep up my physical fitness, um, you know, and as well as maintain a, a home work life balance. And uh, so you're find, I'm finding myself doing, uh, ho- you know, hotel room workouts or uh, lifting suitcases or, or whatever I can to, to stay in shape. So any chance I could possibly get to compete, um, I'll, I'll take it. So whether it be a 5k or 10k uh, on base when I'm home or for instance, the department of defense alpha warrior competition. So this is a, a brand new competition. They started about three years ago. It's uh, kind of like a mix between Ninja warrior and the CrossFit games. And it's a pretty grueling event that they have the finals in San Antonio, Texas. And so my brother and I competed last year on this and I got first, he got second. And my wife, uh, who is my biggest supporter, she's just, the you know love of my life, my best friend, uh, best partner I could have ever hoped for. She's also acts as my uh, essentially my manager. She finds races for me to do, you know, Spartan races, um, obstacle courses, and then obviously this Alpha Warrior thing. She posted on the Titan Games uh, Instagram that uh, the Polisher brothers need to be on season two of the Titan Games. And just like that, I get a call a couple of weeks later um, from the casting director at two o'clock in the morning. And uh, I know who he was. And he's like, hey, you want to be on season two of the Titan Games? Uh, just submit this application, put a video in, and we'll see what happens. And literally, we know, submitted the video and all that stuff. And I was uh, at the Combine in California a couple weeks later and then on the TV show and the rest is history. Man, I love that. And I mean, like you said, and it seems like that's a trend through your whole life. Of course, having those important people in your corner to support you and rally behind you and then having your wife be that cheerleader and that person to submit you guys' name for this opportunity. I mean, one that you you know might not have even been aware of or something that you might have wanted to even pursue. And so, um, Noah, after that, I mean, having that experience and being able to go and compete um, and then compete too with Eric, because isn't that... that probably i mean being 10 years apart was that probably one of the first times other than um the the games that you guys competed in um was that one of the first times that you actually competed against each other absolutely so there have been a couple times we took vacation out to go visit eric and his wife jessica mm-hmm. and uh, in the meantime you know, we've done random uh you know 5ks or 10ks or, or whatever together but realistically we've never lived together and we've never actually competed we've always kind of been uh basing our competitions and uh, how well we've been doing in life off of each other from afar. Um, he, he'll be like, Oh, I got, I got second place in this uh, Spartan race. And I'll be like, Oh, I got, I got first place. And <laughs> you know, whatever. <laughs> so this is the first time. Yeah. We've really competed against each other was the alpha warrior competition in San Antonio for the, for the department of defense. And then we bonded a little bit there, which was great. And then we just took it another step further. And I'll, I'll tell you what the Titan games opportunity, spending that much time filming this show, and bonding over something that we just love more than anything in the world, which is just 
the feel of competition. We just love competing, uh, regardless of who, who it's against or what we're doing. And so we we really built a bond more than we've ever had before because of this show. And it's just fortunate enough that our families were there to help or to, to watch this all unfold. And they were there to cheer us on. And I'm glad the cameras are rolling because now we have uh, <laughs> NBC to document our growth as a brother, uh, as a brotherhood. <laughs> That really is, that's so sweet and beautiful. I mean, I, and you're right. Now you have this forever, this <laughs> thing that you guys were on TV together and you have the film and the audio and everything um, to live with you for the rest of your lives. You get to have that forever. And so I love that, Noah, having that experience with your brother and just cherishing that time that you got to compete and really grow in relationship. And then two, um, the cool thing, having, of course, the the Rock create a show like this and um, unknowingly that you guys would get to be a part of it. And so I, I just want wonder, Noah, given that The Rock, of course, created this show, do you have any recollection of maybe when you first became aware of who The Rock was and um, just your kind of your first memory of who he is, maybe in the WWE or, or just any time before the show? Are you kidding me? When growing up, that was a huge part of myself and my neighbor, uh, John Schweitzer. We would watch professional wrestling uh, like every day. And so absolutely. Yeah. You know, he was huge figure and then I didn't realize how much when I got into the military how much of a key role believe it or not he plays in the military I mean obviously he's a huge proponent of military service and uh, he is just he's got the biggest fan base in the US military and he's a topic of discussion all the time about how motivating he is and uh, well one I mean obviously his his movies are fantastic but um, how entertaining he is and how motivating he is uh, as a person and getting to meet him in real life was just another, bo- I mean, a highlight of my life for sure. Because not only is he a larger than life physical being, he's a larger than life personality. Uh, I mean, when what you won't know by watching the show is that when the cameras were turned off or the show was delayed for X amount of time, instead of going back to his, his uh, VIP tent, and hanging out, he would just stay out there and talk with us. And I can't imagine there would be many people of his status that would, would stay out there and do that. So I I was a fan before, but I'm I can't tell you how much of an of an insanely cool person he is in real life and how realistic he is. So I'm an even bigger fan now. <laughs> Man, I mean, I love hearing that because it's, you're right, you see um, who he is just on social media and watching his movies and, you know, his, of course, accolades as a football player and being in wrestling, um, but to hear that he's actually that genuine person that he puts out there. Um, and then, too, of course, having that um, intertwine in your life, having the military be so important, and then he clearly cares so much for that. And then, too, now creating a show um, that you know, this platform that um, brings together incredible people who've overcome obstacles, overcome great things in their life, just like you and your brother, you and Eric um, being able to do. And so Noah, having this experience specifically with the Titan Games, meeting all these people that you did, The Rock included, and all of these different Titans um, to compete with, I wonder what would you say is your definition of a Titan? Oh, wow. I'll tell you, that's that's actually really easy because we still, believe it or not, we all still are in the same message chat and we we all talk as contestants still to this day right now even after filming several months ago we we still keep in contact so we, we talk about this um and i'll tell you what i've been so motivated by everybody and if i could if i could put it down to one sentence to encompass how what type of athletes and what type of personalities that were on this show this year um one they were incredible people but i would say that collectively to put it all together um a Titan is a person with controlled yet relentless determination, rectitude, and steadfast courage. Wow. That was that was awesome. I mean, that's it's so well put and it really does seem to capture, um, of course, you and Eric and then too everybody that um, competed this season. I mean, I love I love that definition. And so, I mean, Noah, coming off of this experience, experience and um, being able to interact with all these different people, having this incredible relationship bloom with your brother and having the chance to compete with him. Um, looking forward, um, do you, I mean, what's next for you? I, do you have any races? Hope, I mean, I guess coming up, depending upon what happens with the world, or do you have um, anything on the the horizon maybe another tv show that you're gonna apply for <laughs> no way you know i'll tell you when i was on set though 
um, being the skinniest competitor there, I had gotten uh, a couple messages from the uh, the producers that were like, you know what, you'd be perfect for Survivor. Uh, I have no interest in ever being on that show, but <laughs> that uh, they would just pick the skinniest person out of the whole show on the Titan Games and be like, yeah, you should be on Survivor. But um, as far as realistic uh, expectations for what's coming up in the future, my wife and I are getting ready to PCS, so we're getting ready to move from uh, our current location in Tokyo over to Germany. So we're heading over to uh, just in uh, just near Frankfurt, Germany, uh, Ramstein Air Base. We're going to be about a 50-minute drive away from our brother. So this is the closest we re- we're going to ever be living together, and we're going to take advantage of it. So I've got my uh, my manager, <laughs> my wife, <laughs> she's been searching up great for us, and we're going to try to do as many triathlons, mountain biking, cycling, uh, hiking, uh, as much as we possibly can, races all over Europe. So I, I can promise you this, that we're going to be active and uh, we're going to be trying to drag we're going to be trying to drag everybody we can to possibly along with us. <laughs> Heck yeah. I love hearing that. That's so cool that you guys I mean one getting to move closer to your brother for the first time like ever and then two the idea that you're going to continue on this pursuit of fitness and what you're passionate about and that you get to do it and share in it together. You bet. I'm so excited. Can't wait. <laughs> I'm excited for you. That's really cool, Noah. Um, and so Noah, now um, having just led this truly incredible life that you have, and knowing, of course, um, you're going to achieve all these goals that you set for yourself, looking forward um, with such a bright future, and then having too this experience with the Titan Games, serving, um, you know, as a platform to help propel you forward and encouraging people and touching more people, um, like you aspire to do. I just have one final question that I ask all of my interviewees. What do you want to be remembered for? Uh, wow, that's tough. I, I, uh, I don't even know. I, I almost don't want to be. I hate to say it, like you don't want to be remembered. You just hope that you left an impact on somebody. I, I don't. I don't know if that's the right choice of words, but I hope. I hope I don't personally stick in anybody's head, but I hope that the idea that um, that my brother and I try to portray on the show, which is it doesn't matter how big you are compared to the competitors you're going up against, uh, whether it be in a physical, mental, spiritual competition uh, of any sort, that just whatever matters to you most is the most important thing. As long as you have a goal in life, and I don't know, I, I guess really nothing specifically about me. It's more about that person's motivation um, that you, you can really do anything and that uh, don't don't lock yourself into doing one specific thing, but try to take a step out of your comfort zone and do a little bit more than what you're comfortable with, and especially with everything going on right now. It's uh, it's more important than ever that regardless of who you're coming in contact with, regardless of who you're meeting, just uh Take the time to figure out who they are and what their background is and uh, see what motivates them. And it may be it may be something you're not familiar with. It may not be something you're comfortable with, but take a step out of your comfort zone and and go try to try to use your strengths to help build them up and and uh, become a better team overall. Thank you all for tuning in to today's installment of the Athletes of the Titan Games podcast. To learn more about each of these Titan athletes, be sure to check out their information in the links in my show notes. Furthermore, to stay up to date on all things coming out of the KMF Collective, be sure to subscribe to the Keep Moving Forward YouTube channel and follow along on social media, also available in the show notes. As the creator of the Titan Games, Mr. Dwayne The Rock Johnson says, Titans aren't born, they're made. And I hope today's story helped you realize all that you are capable of becoming if you put in that hard work and just keep moving forward.